I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. What happens when life gives you a bad deal? Do you quit or do you keep on going? Young, Dumb, and Thriving. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome back to Young, Dumb, and Thriving. Today you are here with Charmaine and a very special guest, Sheldon. So Sheldon, go ahead and tell us uh, your background. Yeah, so uh, my name is Sheldon Martin. Um, I am currently 27 from San Diego, California. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business. I have a master's degree in business and finance. Um, and Worked in corporate for about four to five years before I eventually retired um, and retired from corporate and yeah. became a full-time entrepreneur. Wow. So, one, let's hit a little bit on the way you were raised. Yeah. So, how, how would you say you were raised? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I feel like I was raised good. Um, I was raised by my mother and father. My dad was a military guy. So, you know, I have uh, discipline from that background. Also, my mom as well. Um, I grew up playing sports, played, what, basketball, football, ran track which uh, was another, you know, way of getting more discipline and, um, you know, making friends and, and so forth. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I grew up middle class. Like I said, we didn't have – I didn't come from a family that didn't have anything, but I didn't come from a family that didn't have everything. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I come from a solid background, and that's what allowed me to eventually – get to college I played I got a scholarship to play football mm -hmm. and that's what I used to get to the point and where I am today wow yeah. so I, one I'm glad that you already tied that in yeah you already like okay let me relate my younger life to what I'm doing now exactly. because that's very important um for those of you who don't have a background to where you were raised in middle class and you were given a poor life keep going like, keep driving, keep trying, because at the end of the day, you create your own future. Exactly. And as you see, he was he was brought up in middle class, and here he goes, now an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I want to hit on that now. Yeah, 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 for sure. One, what was your mindset even before you became an entrepreneur as far as, like, did you always know you wanted to work for yourself? Yeah. Actually, I didn't. Um, and... Quick correction. I am middle class, but I grew up in Southeast San Diego. So, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I actually didn't want to be an entrepreneur. Um, actually, one of my business partners now, his name is Ken Kendall. Um, he actually, he was the one that always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I used to always tell him, like, I'll never be an entrepreneur. I just want to, you know, get my degree, get a good job, make six figures, and work for 30, 40 years. And um, it actually changed when my grandma died. You know, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I was like, you know, it's no way. I seen her go through her life, which was a good life. But yeah. I was like, there's no way I could just live this life, work for somebody else my whole life, and, and do that. So that's when I started to shift. And when she died, I wanted to actually live a life of purpose. And that's when I went towards um, what I was passionate in, passionate in, which was uh, personal finance. Wow. Um, and that's where I kind of started my entrepreneurship. And I started a blog, which is just educational, teaching people about personal finance, investing, stocks, and so forth. Um, and that's where everything started. Wow. Yeah. And, and you said you felt a shift yeah. once your grandmother passed away. Yep. Can you talk a little bit on that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I just, at that point in time, I felt like I was just living to live. I had no, I, I felt like I had no purpose at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, yes, I played sports, but after college, that didn't go anywhere. So um, I wanted to uh, inspire others. And one of the things that I was good at and I was passionate about was personal finance, yeah. um, which includes personal finance includes, you know, budgeting, personal finance, investing, credit, all that all in one. Yeah. So um, while I was in college, a lot, a lot of people think that, you know, when you get your master's degree or when you get your bachelor's degree, they teach you all these things, but they don't. Right. They teach you about accounting, statistics, but they don't teach you about personal finances and investing and so forth. And I knew that there was a gap where a lot of people my age didn't know anything about investing, neither did they care to know, and right. other generations didn't. So that's where I felt like I can bring a lot of uh, value and awareness and purpose in my life and helping others in that area. I think that's amazing yeah. because you, you hit the nail or hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Seriously. Our generation especially, we don't know about finances, exactly. we don't care about investing, yeah. we don't. And that's very important. Because I, I know you're big on generational wealth, yep, right? Yep, yep, and yep. so you feel like knowing financing and having that knowledge about that, that develops generational wealth, correct? Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, the only way you can build generational wealth is being educated and not being ignorant to learning. Yep. A lot of times the problem is a lot of people run away from learning about generational wealth because they feel like it's hard or they feel like, 
Um, oh, another big one is they think everything's a scam. So, yeah. you know, everything's not a scam. You just have to get educated by the right people, get the right mentors, or do your own research by using what we call the internet. So, right. um, <laughs> so yeah, as long as you do those things and educate yourself, you'll be more aware, more comfortable with doing certain and taking certain um, initiatives in your life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can you explain a little bit more as to why you felt personal finance was a route that you wanted to go? Because yeah. I know you said that, well, one, a lot of people around mm -hmm. don't know about it. Yeah. So I, I, that's my way of helping others. Yeah. Yeah. What's another? Reason? So another one, um, another big one is that, so in my, I grew up middle class, right? Yeah. So um, I have two parents, you know, one parent was fairly good with money mm -hmm. and I had another parent, which they weren't bad with money, but they weren't great with money. Yeah. Um, and then also, when I started to educate myself about just, uh, what do you want to call it, societal norms in my area, my, uh, like I said, I grew up in the Southeast. My dad lived in the East Lake Chula Vista, um, yeah. but he was in the military, so he was always overseas. So I spent a lot of time in the Southeast. So a lot of people did not know about generational wealth. A lot of people follow the same trend. You know, their, their great great grandmother grew up in this area, their, their great grandmother, their grandmother, and when they when they pass on, they didn't give their kids anything. They never had life insurance, they never wow. had any investments or 401ks to pass on to their kids. And I didn't want to keep seeing this trend with the people that was closest to me. Right. So that's another reason why I started getting really deep and, and passionate about this topic. That's amazing because yeah. literally it's like that's the whole reason for this show. Like, that's why I wanted you yeah. on the show because I know that you want to inspire others. Yeah. I know that you want to give that knowledge to others exactly. and pour it out in them. Because like you said, people are just following trends. Yeah, exactly. Like, literally, just because their parents did it or their parents are living in it, yeah. oh, I got to do that same thing. Exactly. So did your parents um, master in personal finance or no? Um, no, so my, both of my parents actually have master's degrees, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, my mom has a master's in business, but remember... My mom is okay with finances, but yeah. not the best. Um, my dad, he, he mastered in, uh, he has a master in like computer science, but he's a military guy. So right. a lot of military people are, they're very uh, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually never raised to be an entrepreneur per se. Yeah. I was just raised to not be a follower, have my own mind, not be a knucklehead, get a good job, you know, be disciplined, stay the course. But I never was raised to be an entrepreneur. Right. Um, so that's something I feel like, you know, it was instilled into me. Like, hey, you know, you want to make sure you have your own money. You don't want to ask people for things. But with that being said, I kind of felt like I ventured on this path more along the lines on my own. Right. Um, like, as far as I'm going now. Yeah. Because so, my parents were never entrepreneurs. Got it. So yeah. you would say that you're the first right now in your family to be an entrepreneur. I would say I'm the first person to be an entrepreneur that's taken it to the level where we are today. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because I want, I want to highlight that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what was your mindset on being the first to step out? Because I know a lot of times people are scared yeah, to step yeah. out or do something new because one, they don't know, they don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. They don't have the support because nobody else has done it in yep. their family. You know, mm -hmm. so how... What was your mind? So the biggest thing actually was, um, uh, well, so the first thing I did was I started, when my grandma died, I started my business like next week, boom. Really? Started my business next week. Um, and what I did was, and remember a lot of people think that you need all these, like you need these certain things to start a business. You can start a business today as a right. sole proprietor, which means that all you got to do is start a business under your name. You can literally start a business. You can open a business bank account because your business name has your name in it so you can open a business bank account. It's not hard, but long story short, I started my first business, which was a blog. Um, I created a, a domain, created a website. That was what I wanted to do. I started educating people, writing blogs like two times a week, and that's what I started. Um, and then I started these smaller businesses, and when I got to larger businesses, I was kind of scared, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's because, you know, the, it's called, uh, it's called basically you have outside influences scaring you. So you want to tell people you want to start this business. Say, like, it's never going to work. Oh. There's so many people doing that or they're, you know, how, how do you know you're going to be successful? So you have all these outside influences influencing your mind. And that's why I was like, you know, I want to start this business, but I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it with somebody. And that's where one of my businesses, I have like three or four, but one of my businesses, I started with a partner that is, that was already polished in this area yeah. and we had the same interest. So, um, so yeah, I mean, started a business with somebody else and that made me feel a lot comfortable mm -hmm. with just jumping in. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So you talked about how you have four businesses, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So can you go ahead and kind of explain? Each? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my first business I started was Money the Millennial Way, which is um, basically, that was my brand. I wanted to bring a lot of awareness. And my target market was millennials, but anybody can, you know, get this information. Right. Um, so that was my first business, which was the, the, uh, the educational business in the blog. I created an investing one-on-one -on -one program for beginners to le learn generational wealth, which was teaching people, beginners, about the stock market and, you know, how to invest for long term. 
So that was my first business. My second business was Premium ATM LLC, which is an ATM business. So um, like the ATMs you see at the mall and outlets, those are potentially my ATMs or other individual ATMs. So I started an ATM business where I buy and place ATMs in local places and people use them. And every time, you know how the ATM will charge you $275, $3, yeah. that money goes directly to me. And if you know, somebody's using it a thousand times per month, you can do the math. Yeah. That was my second business. My third one was um, where I started. It was, um, it's under Money the Millennial Way, but it's called Credit Millennial. Mm -hmm. um, so you see the common theme is like millennial because I'm yeah. a millennial. <laughs> but um, Credit Millennial, which I started teaching people about how to repair their own credit. I taught people about credit hacks, travel hacks, how to travel for free. And then last but not least, which I started just recently, um, which is my most successful business actually, um, and hands-on as well, is Lifestyle Credit Repair, um, which we have a corporation, which I started with my partner, Kendall Kirkland. Um, and yeah, so those are the four businesses I have today. And I can, if, you know, I can explain why I kind of like channeled through that way, but yeah, those are the yeah, four businesses. Yeah, please I have explain that. Yeah, so all of them are still going at this time. I still spend time on them, but a lot of them are passive income streams. Mm -hmm. um, my lifestyle credit repair is my most active where I'm in it day to day, talking to people on the phone. But like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to get into finance because a lot of people in our generation didn't care about their generational wealth. Right. Um, so that's why I wanted to get into it, but that's the same reason why I started to create other business ventures around that core business. The reason being is because when I was trying to find clients, a lot of younger people didn't care to pay me to help them with their budgeting because right. it's boring and nobody cares. Young people want to turn up, which is fine. I do it too, but <laughs> young people want to turn up. They want to travel. They don't yeah. even care about their long-term retirement. They all save a little bit in their savings account, but they don't care about investing. So it was hard for me to get clients there. In the older generation, they didn't trust me. At that time, I was 22. Even though I, I, was, I had a master's degree, no older per person trusted me with their money or mm. trusted me giving them advice about their money. So I was like, all right, I need to make a change here and shit. I'm not going to ever get out of my full-time job doing this. That's when I went towards um, travel hacks and credit. And then from travel hacks and credit, that's more of a fun thing. Mm -hmm. um, I went to credit repair because it's more sustainable and everybody needs credit. You need yeah. credit to buy a home, buy a car, uh, even get a rent an apartment. So yeah. I was like, somebody's going to, they're going to have, they're going to have to come see me one day. You know <laughs> you're going to see me. Yeah, you're going to see me one day. <laughs> Um, and that's where I went to credit repair and now it's, it's sustainable, it's recession proof and, um, you know, it's always going to be around and never can be taken on by a robot. So. Wow. I just want to highlight that because the, first of all, that's amazing because yeah. that shows your willingness to adapt yeah, and exactly. overcome. Exactly. You never just want to stay stagnant in one place be, and then be like, oh my God, this is not working. Let me just go back to working at nine to five. Yeah. No, no, no. You have to re-improve yourself, yep. and that's with life. Like, yep. in life, you're always going to have to go through different situations and learn from it and better yourself from it, and that's exactly. literally what you did. Yep. So just to keep this mindset mm -hmm. and go on to the next segment. Now, Sheldon, here is your bin of life, okay? Mm -hmm. You know how we all have that trash bin, especially since you're a businessman. Mm -hmm. I know you had plenty of old ideas that yeah, you just yeah, crumbled yeah. up throughout and was like, okay, let me start fresh on a new one. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what this game is about. He is going to have to dig through the bin, pull out the trash that he finds, open it up, and if it says something or if it has something in it, he's going to read it and explain what it means to him. Go ahead. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> you go slow. <laughs> Okay. And that's nothing. All right. All right. Let's up for another one, right? <laughs> yep. Keep going. Oh, okay. Well, don't put it back in there because oh, that was even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I think you got an important one. He did. Huh. Okay. It says, "Don't give up, almost there." So, what does this mean to me, right? Yeah. What's that? Oh, mean? I just funny. I just put some on my Instagram about this. Today. Really? Yes. <laughs> So, um, basically, I'll just mimic what I said there. So, I've been in business for around, uh, I'll say, three or four years now. Um, I've done different business streams or different business ideas. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, a lot of them are still running. A lot of people these days, they want instant gratification. So, right, you know, a lot of people you see, you feel as if people are overnight successes when they yeah. really aren't. Right. I, like My first year or two, I didn't make any money. But it was okay because I still worked full time. Um, so I had an income stream coming in and I used that money to invest and reinvest in my education and into my business. So um, what this means to me is that don't worry about the instant gratification. Mm -hmm. One, two, stay the course. If you stay the course and be consistent, yeah. then you will be successful. Also, tune out the noise from 
Never take advice from somebody. If you're trying to be an entrepreneur, never take advice from somebody that's never been an entrepreneur. Thank you. But 99% of the time, whether it's your parents, whether it's grandparents, whether it's friends, family, they're going to try to give you the advice, which is going to skew your mind in other ways. Right. So that's what uh, this means to me. All right. Yeah, yeah. I just love how he explains everything because he's so professional. He's like, one <laughs> and two, make sure you do oh, it. Yeah, that's me. Like, that's, that's a businessman right that's there. Me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> we doing more? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Oh, no, yeah. You gotta keep going. Okay. Yeah. Empty that bin. Move a little faster, man. You got the out what? All right. Nope. Nope. In here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. It's kind of like how on Christmas, if you don't give a kid something, oh, their yeah, face, no. they're like, dang, that ain't it. Okay. Oh, good. There ain't nothing. <laughs> we gonna get to this bin. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get this bin. Yeah, you'll see it. Like, yeah, this yep. is something. Here's one right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna have to explain the meaning of that, too. Huh. Okay. All right. What is that? This is a dollar, and it says uh, that one idea. That started it all. Mm. It's a good one. So, mm. uh, the one idea that started it all, I would say, um, I have so many ideas. It started, yeah. It's so many different ones. So, um, okay. So, when I, the credit in um, the travel hacking and credit hacking thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's once again pivoting, understanding my target market, my yeah. target audience. Nobody wanted to. Let me advise them on investing. So I'm like, okay, I know millennials want to travel, so I'm yeah. gonna learn this stuff. So I had literally invested, invested like two or three thousand dollars in learning this information from other mentors, mm -hmm. um, which you can't find on YouTube. These travel hacks and credit hacks. Yeah. And um, I was like, I'm going to make my own course showing people how to do this. Right. Um, and I seen one YouTube video that was my that's what triggered me. Yeah. And from there, I was all in. I wow. was like, learn this stuff. I'm gonna invest in this education, and I'm gonna resell it and make ten times my investment. Exactly. And that's what triggered. The credit stuff and all of that. And then that's kind of like what led me to where I am today. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. All right. Now, I'm going to explain why I wrapped it up and take it. You can keep going okay. looking for stuff. But literally, the reason I taped it like that is because that's the hardest idea to get to. Yeah. And I felt like with you, that would line up with your one idea of, you know what? I am going to work for myself. Yep. You yep. know what? I am going to be different. Yeah, so. exactly. This is a good one as well. It's funny because <laughs> I can... Every time I see this, it just find that stuff triggers my head. Not <laughs> anything else. So this is small beginnings. You have a penny here. So um, with this one, there's two things I want to correlate. So <clears throat> the first one is going to be, which we talked about earlier. Um, I didn't make any money. I didn't make any money in my businesses for the first year for sure. The second year, I can't remember. I think I started making money, um, but not much, you know. And now, fast forward to three, uh, what the third or fourth year later, we're making six figures. You know right. what I mean? So. So small beginnings, meaning it's okay to not make any money at first, as long as you know where you're going. Right. One, two, investing. A lot of people say, hey, how much money do I need to invest? They think you need this large lump sum. You really, you only need $1, $5. As long as you keep adding money to your investing portfolio, it will continue to grow over a span of time. And next thing you know, you're going to have 100,000, then, you know, then 500,000, then a million. So as long as you start somewhere, whether yeah. it's a dollar, whether it's $5, then as long as you're consistent, then you, you start small, but eventually you're going to get to the point to where you're up there. I love this game for him. It's not my mind working. Right? You see what I'm saying? Like the, the game's are yeah. small, but the, the mind has to think. The exactly. Mind There's nothing on that. All right. Okay. Maybe some on this <laughs> He's like, let me pull out that important looking paper. All right. So... Challenge, challenging, challenging situations. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> so challenging situations. Um, well, I just came across mine's actually. Um, so I just retired from my corporate in the corporate world. What maybe in November? Um, and that was one of the most challenging situations I've ever had. Because you have so many things going through your mind, right? Like although I've been making more money in my business than my corporate job for the last year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. it took me all that time to quit. Why? Because for one, I'm more conservative. For two. It's like the unknown. Like, okay, what if I just stop making money today? Right. Am I not? I'm not gonna have that guaranteed income. So that's a very challenging situation. Mm -hmm. Other challenging situations. If you have a business dealing with customers, that's always gonna be challenging because 
when people are ignorant to a lot of things or unknowing or uneducated, they expect certain things that may not be the truth. Right. And once again, it's outside influences that are, you know, getting them fired up. So yeah. um, I think those are the two biggest challenging things I've had to deal with is just dealing with customers and, you know, the customer service side of things and people just un not understanding. And then also just knowing when's the right time to kind of go all in on yourself. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's some good advice. Yeah. I, I hope y'all getting this. Yeah. Okay, exactly. honey, you, you better you better be getting this. This is free advice because exactly. you know you gotta pay for it. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, character. All right. So um, the first thing I think about when I see character is um, uh, don't sell your, don't sell yourself don't sell yourself. Um, and that was one of my biggest things in corporate. And I, that's why I started. I got to the point where I couldn't wait to get out of corporate. One of the reasons being is because um, I was, when you look at, when you're in corporate, a lot of, a big thing they look at is analytics, right? Mm -hmm. um, how well are you performing? I was one of the best performers for, I'll say, three years, four years straight, right? But I couldn't get a promotion. And the reason being is because they wanted me to do things that was out of my character, right? Um, and from an ethical point of view, how I was raised, I'm never going to sell my soul. Um, right. Sell my soul to anybody. Right. Um, so with that being said, also... Money is fine, making money is fine, but you never want to, you never want to do something unethical just to make a, a dollar because that's right. going to come in full circle and you're going to have, you know, negative karma typically right. if you were to do that. So that's some of the first things I think about. With character. Yeah, with character. That's awesome. That's All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Field ideas. Um, kind of touched base on this one earlier, but field ideas, like I said, I have tons and tons of ideas. Um, time in, time out. I implement new things. They don't go well. Um, there's going to be a lot of, before you get your, well, unless you're lucky, before you get your first booming business, you're probably going to have at least three fails. Right. Um, and that's a fact. Based on not only my experience, but also other people's experience as well. Right. So, um, once again, don't get discouraged if you have a business that you wanted to start and, you know, it didn't go the way it may have, you may have wanted it to. Just kind of uh, pivot and you have to be able to adapt. The companies that don't adapt, such as Blockbuster, you know. Toys R Us. Yeah, Toys R Us. A lot of companies that don't adapt, they usually go out of business. So as long as you're willing and innovative or if you're not innovative, have somebody on your team that's innovative that can show you how to adapt yeah. with the new trends. Then your business is going to go. It's going to be booming, um, you know, eventually. Yeah. All right, guys. As you can see, his game time was self-explanatory of how it relates to real life, because all of his definitions that he used one was incredible advice to take from a businessman, an entrepreneur. Just like he hit, he literally said, if somebody who is not an entrepreneur tries to give you advice on being one, <laughs> don't take that. You know, because that's that's too much outside influence that's going to alter the way you think and yeah. alter your mindset. Yeah. And literally, I, I just want you to hit anything else that you have to tell the audience, like yeah. anything else you want to tell them about yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and just going on the outside influence, you know, this is going to come from the closest people to you, right? So when I told my mom I was going to quit my job, you know, the first thing she said is, when you're quitting your job, I told her the date. She said, really? You want to do it that soon? So instantly, I started to doubt myself. Like, really? <laughs> like, like, should I do this? You know? Yeah. And that comes from one of the closest people in my life. So, you know, it's don't don't take outside influence. You you would know when it's time. You would know when it's ready. Um, second thing I want to touch base on is, you know, it's cool to travel. It's cool to do fun things. But just make sure that you are setting yourself up for the future. Because especially the millennial generation and younger generations, we're probably not even going to have social security to live off of. So you just want to make sure that you are starting today. Do not wait. There's something called um, compound interest. And I don't want to go into the specifics. But if you start today, um, you know, you're going to be in a much better place if you were to wait six years. I actually just did a, um, a case study with my little brother. Yeah. And I showed him the difference of waiting six years. Mm -hmm. And that difference of waiting six years as far as investing was over $900,000, just wow. six years, just six years. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you are investing, wow. fine. If you're not, start today. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, your credit is super important. Do not, um, do not uh, let anybody else use your credit. Do not co-sign for people. Your credit is one of your most prized possessions. It shows your ability to pay things back over time. If you have bad credit, you are never going to be able to get a home, apartment, car. Um, and if you get approved for those things, you're going to have a terrible interest rate. So, 
Um, if you get to the point where if you do have bad credit, there's a lot of people out there. You can do your own research and fix your own credit, or you can come to a company such as ours that will help you fix your credit as well. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything I just wanted to kind of lay out yeah. um, for, for the show. Yeah, thank you so much, one, for coming on yeah. and giving your advice. And I just want you guys to know that all his information will be down below in the description box. So make sure you check him out and his business partner out as well. They have some really good advice out there. And you said that you guys do... Um, like programs, you said? Like you do yeah, yeah. stuff that yeah, so stuff. Yep, yep. So um you mean like educational stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so we have actually a lot of free educational information oh, really? on our Instagram. Um we have a lot of free in educational information going over things that you probably didn't know. Yeah. So that's on our business Instagram at Lifestyle Credit Repair. But um but yeah, we also have paid programs as well, which mm -hmm. is like my credit and travel hacking course where you learn how to repair your own credit, travel for free and so forth. Yeah. Or any of our other stuff we have out there, business credit stuff. But yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure you'll put the stuff in below yes. or um, in the uh, description or the bio. Mm -hmm. So they can go to any of those platforms and see what we have to offer and so forth. Yes, of course. So because you came on the show and I just appreciate it so much. Oh, Here you thank go. You, thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Appreciate and, it. and like I said, I've, I've known Sheldon for what, like a year now? Not too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too long. Yeah. But literally like he's always been like that, yeah. a businessman. <laughs> and I do want to hit on the fact that he still enjoys his life. Oh uh, yeah. You, he yeah. travels, yeah. right? Work-life balance. My exactly. Thing. That's my he thing. always says yeah. that. And, and that's balance. a good thing though, to be able to have that mindset. Oh, yeah, because sure. you do want to work hard for yourself, but you also want to enjoy, enjoy your life while you're doing it. Exactly. And so you guys definitely need to check him out. Check out his business partner. They're two incredible men.